It states at the top of the page that we're going to look at the properties and attributes of polygons now. So in geometry, a figure that lies in the plane is called the plane figure. Later on, we'll get to 3D figure. So we're going to talk about adding that third dimension to form the solid. A polygon is a closed plane figure. And we'll, sit, we'll look at that down at the bottom, what closed means, with the following property. It is formed by how many line segments? How many line segments do you need in order to form a polygon? Yeah. At least three. And those line segments are called sides. Each side intersects exactly two sides, one at each endpoint, so that no two sides with a common endpoint are collinear. So we'll look at again the pictures. Each endpoint is called a vertex with the plural vertice. So let's fill in the table. Three-sided polygon is called a triangle. You can go ahead and write in the terms. Four, quadrilateral. Five, pentagon. Six, hexagon. We talked about eight being the octagon. Seven is the heptagon. So H-E-P-T-A-G-O-N. Nine is a nonagon. Ten, decagon. Twelve is a do decagon. And anything other than 12 and greater than 10 in the, is going to be n gone. So for an example, you could see 18 dash gone, and that means an 18-sided polygon. So they'll ask you in a word problem, given an octagon, so they expect you to know how many sides an octagon has or anything in this table. Anything, again, greater than 10 but not 12, they'll put the number in front of the dash and then gone. Okay, so looking at this section here are some tables. When we were talking about open versus closed, a polygon is a closed figure. That's open. Okay, just to highlight. Here's an example where your two sides are adjacent so that you have three points that are collinear. That can't happen. Okay, so all of these figures on the left are polygons, where these are not. On your exploration, it talked about convex versus concave. And I came around when you were drawing your polygons and made note to some of you that you were drawing a convex polygon. The figure on the left, or a concave rather, you should have been drawing a convex. The figure on the left is convex meaning every single diagonal as it highlights within the figure, anytime you draw a diagonal, it's within the polygon. If you can draw a diagonal outside, it's called concave. It also looks like the figure is caving in right here. So a triangle caving in looks like that. So here's concave. Two vocab terms that may be new are regular polygons versus irregular. If it's regular, it means all angles you can see are marked, are congruent. So all angles congruent means equiangular. So if it says that in a question, all angles congruent is equiangular, where all sides congruent, as you can see, they're marked means it's equilateral. So a figure that has all angles congruent, all sides congruent, is 
regular. So let's take the smallest polygon or the triangle formed by the smallest number of sides. If it's a regular triangle, it's equilateral, it's equiangular, that means all angle measures are each 60. 180 divided by 3 is 60. If it was a quadrilateral that was regular, the interangle sum was 360, what would each angle be? 360 divided by the number of sides is 90. Okay, same with if we move up to the pentagon. Interangle sum is 540. And you may memorize these, but if you can see the pattern, you don't have to memorize. Divide the interangle sum by the number of sides it has, because the number of sides will determine how many angles it has. So here, a polygon that's not, again, all the side lengths aren't the same in this figure here. The angle measures are not all the same or congruent. So it's irregular. So this table summarizes what you did in the exploration. Again, we said the number of triangles was how many less than the number of sides? Two. So if it's a triangle, did it, did we, could we draw any diagonals inside? No, it just had the one triangle. It was the only one. Quadrilateral, we had two. Pentagon, we had three. Hexagon, we had four. The interangle sum, go ahead and fill that in if you can recall. We started with 180, and then to move to the next, we just added 180. And every polygon had the same exterior angle sum of 360 degrees. So that formula that we use, if you have a polygon with n sides, again, the number of triangles was 2 less than the number of sides it has. So if that was n, there's n minus 2 triangles. So to find an interior angle sum, that means what do all of them add up to, you just use the formula n minus 2 times 180. Or you can sketch it and break it up into triangles, okay? Exterior angle sum is always 360. So on the right side, if you want to find each, that means just one angle. So one angle of a regular polygon, meaning all sides and all angles are the same. They have the same measures. So I take this n minus 2 times 180, and I divide by the number of sides. However, if you already know this, as we talked about with the triangle, do you need to do the substitution? No, if it's a regular triangle, so it's equilateral, the sides are the same, equiangular, all angles, then just take 180 divided by 3. We talked about the quadrilateral, take 360 divided by 4. Take the 540, if it's regular, pentagon, divided by Five. So if you have these memorized, if it's a regular hexagon, divide it by six and you'll find out what each one of them is. But if you don't have it memorized or if it wants to know what each angle of a 20-sided polygon is going to be, you have to use the formula. Okay? Each exterior angle, so again, one exterior angle, you take 360 and divide it by N. So in example number one, it says, find the sum of the, me uh, of the measures of the angles of a 15-sided polygon. So what do all of them add up to? That's the formula n minus 2 times 180. Number of sides. So right here, it's a 15-sided polygon. 15 minus 2 is 13. So in my calculator, I would find the product of 13 and 180 which is 2,340. So find the sum of the measures of the angles. I do want to include the degree measure because they all are measured in terms of degrees, so they're all going to add up 
to a degree measure. So when it just says find the sum of the measures of the angles, it's talking about the angles inside. Okay? It'll be specific if it wants the exterior angle sum. Find the value of A in this polygon. This polygon, what's the name? One, two, three, four. Five sides is? Pentagon. There are how many angles in the exterior? There's five sides. There's going to be one, two, three, four, five exterior angles. So five interior, its adjacent angle is going to have the five exterior. No matter how many exterior angles, the sum is always 360. So you just take a minute and add up all your A's. So I'll start. We've got 7A plus 2 is 9A. Plus 3, 12A, plus 6, 18A, plus 2, 20A. So 20A is equivalent to 360. Divide by 20, and A is equal to 18. Find the value of A, we're done. Example number 3, find the value of X and Y. It's noting in the picture with those markings that all one, two, five sides are congruent. So X represents one of the interior angles, and Y represents one of the exterior angles. If all sides are the same, what's true about all angles? They're also the same measure or congruent. So to find X, does anyone just have it memorized with the sum of the interior angles for, from the previous page, Julia? 540. So I just take 540. If you have it memorized, you don't have to do the 5 minus 2 times 180. You can use 540 divided by 5, and x is 108. Why? Again, all the exterior angles always add up to 360, so 360 divided by 5. You could also utilize the relationship, well, if each angle is 108, its adjacent angle forms a linear pair. So rather than dividing 360 by 5, you could say y plus 108 is equal to 180 degrees. Both equations give you an answer of what? One eighty minus one hundred eight probably is easier than do three sixty. No, seventy two. So y is equal to seventy two degrees. Key words that you're looking for. All right, number four. Find the measure of each interior angle. So what's one in a nonagon? I don't know the sum off the top of my head, so n minus 2 times 180 divided by 9. 9 minus 2 is 7. You can cross-cancel here. How many times does 9 go into 180? What's that? Yeah. 20 is right, so then 7 times 20 is? 140. So the measure of each interior angle is 140 degrees. In number five, if I were to do some translating, it says if the sum of the angles of a polygon is 2,520. Again, when it's talking about the sum of the angles, it's talking about the sum of the interior angles. And that formula because it says how many sides does it have, n is always our number of sides. The formula to find all of the interior angle sum, so that's n minus 2 times 180 
is equivalent to 2,520. We're going to solve for n. So with this equation, there's a variety of different ways you can do it. So let's go ahead and solve on your paper. So in solving, it asks how many sides. In solving the equation, we get n equals 16. It doesn't ask us to classify. Number of sides is 16. So I should probably actually say 16 sides. Last one. Find the number of sides. So I'm solving for n of a regular polygon. So that means all sides and angles are congruent, if you need to make note of the vocab, whose interior angles each measure 171 degrees. So interior angle, to find each, we did the n minus 2 times 180 divided by n. So what it's saying is after we do that, we get 171 degrees degrees. Now let's take a moment to solve this equation. After solving the equation here, our number of sides is 40. So moving to the back, example number 7, find the number of sides of a regular polygon whose exterior angles each, so it's looking for one angle, so to find each, I know it told me what one of them was, but to get just one, we divide 360 by n. So we get 45. Put it over 1, cross multiply again, 45n is equal to 360. Divide by 45, and n equals, well, 9 times 6 is, or I'm sorry, 9 times 4 is 36, but 45 times... Eight. It said find the number of sides. You could also see a question too where it says classify the polygon. Now number eight. So I want you to try to highlight the key expressions that we're going to translate as I read it aloud. Find the number of sides. So that means we're going to solve for n if, so this is where we start translating. The sum of the measures of the interior angles is four times as great as the sum of the measures of the exterior angles. So is is our equal sign. The left side after the word if, the sum of the measures of the interior angles is always n minus 2 times 180. That's the formula. Four times is great on the other side. The sum of the measures of the exterior angles. Well, that's always 360. You may want to multiply four times 360 first. So that's 1,440. And as some of you did in the previous question, you divided by 180 first. Then we get n minus 2 equal to, so it's 8, add the 2, and n equals 8. So find the number of sides. We have 8 sides. <laughs> it is not 8, thank you for correcting me, plus 2 is 10. So we have 10 sides. So the polygon would be, what's a 10-sided polygon? a decagon.